Welcome to the second video on analysis of loops. This video will focus on calculating steady states in the closed loop. First of all, we need to ask what the student should know before they watch this video. We need them to understand what is feedback, how do you construct feedback diagrams, um, what's the meaning of transfer functions, and then what we're going to do is answer certain questions. What do we mean by system gain? And then, how do we find the steady state gain of a closed loop? Finally, perhaps later on, we will develop some shortcuts. So first of all, let's ask the question, what do we mean by system steady state gain? So the steady state gain is the ratio of the output signal to the input signal, assuming that the input is constant and clearly the steady state output is constant. So we'll draw a diagram here to show you what we mean. Let's assume that coming into a block, you've got an input signal a bit like this. So I'll write u of t and you can see, in essence, it's a step. That goes into a transfer function block g of s and out of that comes y. Now let's not worry too much about y do what y does, but you'll see eventually it will get to a steady state value. Okay, now alternatively we could represent this u of t with a transfer function a over s if I make sure it's got magnitude a and the steady state, or rather the output, is going to be given by y of s equals g of s times a over s. OK, so we've assumed the input is a step of magnitude a, and the system is g of s. And we've just derived that y of s equals g of s a over s. And what we've said is that the the gain is the steady state of y of t divided by the steady state of u of t. So how are we going to find this? Well, first of all, we need to find out what's the steady state of y. We already know the steady state of u is a. Perhaps if I write that here, the steady state of u of t equals a. So what we want is the steady state of y of t. So what we've done here is we've used the final value theorem. Um, essentially, we've plugged in this y of s. So if you look down here, you'll find that that block there is just y of s. So we're using the final value theorem, the limit as s goes to 0 of s times g of s times a over s. And what I can do is I can cancel those two s's. So you get the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s times a, which clearly gives you g of 0 times a. And this is equivalent to the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t from the final value theorem. So we've got two things. We know the steady state of u, and we know the steady state of y. Now, we're going to assume here that g of 0 is finite. And now we can find the gain as the limiting value as t goes to infinity of y of t divided by the limiting value as t goes to infinity of u of t. And substituting the values above, we get g of 0 times a over a or g of 0. So you can see the steady state gain of a transfer function is just g of 0. Some questions then just to reinforce this. So find the steady state gain of the following transfer functions. Now remember, all we're going to do is set s equal to 0. It's as simple as that if you want to find the steady state gain. So h of 0 equals a. Because when I set s equal to 0, I just get 1 in the denominator. g of 0 is going to be 5 divided by 1 times 4 times 2, which is 5 over 8. And hopefully you're getting the message here. This is really very, very easy, because once you remove the s's, the problem that remains is very simple. Now, m of 0 
it's technically not defined because you're going to get 4 over 0 times 3 or infinity. Now that's an important one to recognize. You'll notice m has got an s on its own in the denominator, i.e. it's got a pole at 0, or we usually call this an integrator, and the consequence of that is the steady state gain is infinite. And This is quite an important property that we will use later. And the final example, k of 0 is minus a. And you'll notice the interesting thing about k is it's got a right half plane pole. And it's ended up, in this case, having a negative steady state gain. So in summary, the system gain for a transfer function g of s is just given by substituting s equals 0, i.e. g of 0. If g of s includes poles at the origin, then the system gain is infinite. And this is an important property you will need in later videos. A system with unstable poles can still have a steady state gain. And you might be thinking, this doesn't make sense, because if it has unstable poles, surely the output diverges to infinity. However, it's possible to put the appropriate dynamics into the input signal to ensure that the corresponding output is still convergent, and therefore steady state gain is still well defined. Now, the topic that's perhaps more important in the long term is how do we find the steady state gain of a closed loop? So we've put a simple closed loop up here for the students to uh, look at and reminded them of the transferences from the target R to different signals in the loop. Now you'll remember that there are a number of videos on block diagrams, so if this has gone too fast for you or you don't remember it, go and look at those videos. What we've got then is y of s is given by gm over 1 plus gm times r of s, or u of s is m over 1 plus gm times r of s, or e of s it was 1 over 1 plus gm times r of s. Now, we're just going to assume that students are familiar with these closed loop transferences here on. What we particularly want to look at in this video is this one here, y. Now, closed loop steady state gain. Using the same definitions as earlier, you remember that we said you calculated the gain in the steady state simply by substituting s equals 0 into the transfer function. Well, now we have a closed loop transfer function. Here it is, gm over 1 plus gm. So if I want to find the steady state gain of the closed loop, I just substitute uh, s equals 0 into that transfer function. And that will give me, therefore, the limiting value as t goes to infinity of y of t divided by the limiting value as t goes to infinity of r of t. The steady state relationship between the output y and the loop input r. So here we go. If I set s equals 0, I get a formula as simple as that. And you'll say there's nothing clever there at all. All I've done is wherever there's an s, I've replaced it by 0. So I've got g of 0 times m of 0 divided by 1 plus g of 0 times m of 0. And that gives you the steady state gain of this simple closed loop. Some examples then to see if we can do this. Now the first thing I'm going to do, as ever, good practice, is remind myself of how the steady state gain is defined. So the steady state gain equals g of 0, m of 0, divided by 1 plus g of 0, m of 0. And now I can do some numbers. So I've got g of 0 equals 6 over 8, m of 0 equals 2, and therefore gc of 0 equals, we're going to get 12 over 8, is g of 0 times m of 0, which is 1.5. So I get 1.5 over 1 plus 1.5, which gives me 3 over 5. And then finally, the limiting value as t goes to infinity of y of t is going to be 3 times 3 over 5. Now this extra 3 has come from the fact that the target is 3. There you can see r of s is 3 over s. And so the answer we've got 
is 1.8. Now you'll notice the target is 3, the steady state is 1.8. This loop will not drive the output to the steady state target. There's going to be an offset. And more of this in the next video. Another example. In this case, you'll notice there's an unstable pole in G of S. However, the loop's been set up so that the loop is still stable. Or at least, we hope so. So the first thing we need to do is just confirm that the loop is stable. So the closed loop poles will come from the formula 6 plus s squared plus 4s minus 5, which gives you s squared plus 4s plus 1. And so you can see that's got two poles in the left half plane. So the closed loop is indeed stable. If the closed loop wasn't stable, then the output isn't going to converge and you can't really talk about steady state gain. It's a bit meaningless. So now we'll go back and use the same formula as on the previous slide. I calculate g of 0, which in this case is going to be 3 over minus 5. I calculate m of 0, which is 2. And therefore, gc of 0, I multiply these together, I'm going to get 6 over minus 5 over 1 plus 6 over minus 5. That's a, a bit of a painful one to have to deal with. So what have you got? You've got minus 1.2 divided by minus 0.2. I hope I haven't made a silly mistake here. And therefore, you've got 6. So GC of 0 equals 6. And therefore, finally, the limiting value of y of t oops, as t goes to infinity, is going to be 6 times 2, which is 12. Again, you'll notice you get rather a large offset in this particular case. Another example with an unstable pole. Again, let's check, is the closed loop stable? So the closed loop pole polynomial is going to be given by PC equals 2 plus s minus 4, which gives me s minus 2. This is a right half plane pole, not stable, OK, gain, not defined. All right, so if the transfer function you um, result in has got right half plane poles, clearly you cannot have a steady state, so there's no point trying to find the steady state gain. So in this case, you don't need to find the final value. And another example. G of s is now s plus 1 over s, s plus 3, m of s is 4, r of s is 5 over s. Now I can tell by inspection that this one's closed loop stable, so I won't prove it. Um, Later on, as you get more competent, you'll be able to see this is stable by inspection as well. So using the formula as before, I calculate g of 0 equals now here. You'll notice I get infinity. I perhaps shouldn't use infinity, but there we go. Because we've got this pole at the origin or integrator in g of s. I've got m of 0 equals 4. So now if I use the formula gc of 0 equals g of 0 m of 0 over 1 plus g of 0 m of 0, you'll see that I get infinity over infinity, which is 1. And therefore, the limiting value as t goes to infinity of y of t equals 5 times 1, which is 5. Now again, the 5 has come from here, and you notice in this case there is no offset. The output has tracked the target in the steady state because the limiting value is the same. And one final um, example. You'll see in the box in the bottom that's been covered by this unwanted icon, uh, the closed loop is stable. We're not asking you to prove that, we're giving you that. Now this one is um, just a bit different 
to make you think. In this particular case, you would have to solve that y of s equals g m over 1 plus g m h times r of s, a slightly different transfer function because you'll notice there's this h in the feedback path. Again, if you're not familiar with block diagrams to do that by inspection, go and look at the videos on block diagrams. So now, substituting in all my formula, the limit as t goes to infinity of y of t is going to be g of 0, m of 0, over 1 plus g of 0, m of 0, h of 0. And the limiting value of r was 5. So now I can almost do this by inspection. So g of 0, again, you'll see this has got, I'll circle it here, it's got a pole at the origin. So again, g of 0 is infinite. So I'm going to get infinity times m, which is 4, over 1 plus, and then we're going to get infinity times 4 times 1, and therefore, and that's all times 5, and because it's infinity over infinity, you will end up with 5. So in this case, again, no offset. However, I should give the students a slight warning here, because if you um, set the steady state gain of h of s not to be 1, then you will get an offset. But that's a subtlety that we'll look at perhaps in later videos, but not here. In summary, the system steady state gain can be computed by substituting s equal naught into a transfer function. The steady state gain of a loop can be computed, therefore, by substituting s equal to naught into the closed loop transfer function. And the steady state output is simply the gain times the steady state input. A few warnings. The signals have got to be convergent, so you do this first to check for stability. And if a transfer function contains an integrator, the associated steady state gain is infinite.